Okay, it's going to be my last video of the day and um, turn this down. So I am going to now show you a plugin called Easy Drummer. It's by a company called Tune Track. And you get the basic version, which comes with some great loops and great sounds. But the cool thing is they offer all these different expansion libraries with different samples for drums and different more different grooves, different patterns. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, and then we also, as you know, we went and we used Omnisphere. We created four tracks, and now we're going to add some drums. So we're going back over to Pro Tools, Command Tab, and I'm going to create a new audio instrument. And remember my uh, anal retentive uh, order of my tracks. So whenever I open up any session, because sometimes sessions are huge, it is click track to the far left, drums, percussion, bass, guitars, keyboards, vocals, and effects. And like I said, anytime I open up a Pro Tools session, if you get in the habit of being organized like that, you know when you look to the left, that's where you can turn your click on and off or edit your drums. And it's so much better to have a system when you start using Pro Tools and start it now. So I'm going to click right next to the, I'll click on the click track and I'm going to go Command Shift N and I'm going to create a stereo, right here, stereo instrument track. And I say create. And now, here comes an instrument track. And I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to name it Easy Drums. And then I'm going to save. I'm going to make sure that it's going out of, into here. So um, my video app. I'll go to Multi-Channel Plugin. I go to Instrument. And I go to Easy Drummer. So when you get Easy Drummer, the first thing you'll get are, you, you want to hear the patterns, right? So these are your drums. You can click on them. The browser is where you listen to your patterns. When you get Easy Drummer, you get these. You'll see just this, these two right here, this and this. These are drums. These are percussion. So let's say we want the song to start with a shaker. So here's shaker right here. And we can say, here's a shaker. We probably want a straight shaker. We, let me see, here's, that's, or do we want, okay, I'm going to make um, quick decisions because I have to get out of my pajamas and over to friend's house to watch Game of Thrones. Um, so I'm going to have the shaker come in on bar six. So I'm going to let the uh, pad and the whatever part, fusion part, come in on itself. But we want a couple of these, right? Uh, we want more than one shaker part. So I can um, hold the option key and drag just like we did with notes. If you option drag something, it, this works in Photoshop, this works in most every application. Now we've got four bars of shaker just by holding the option key and dragging it. So let's go to the edit window, command equal to go back to the window and let's listen from the top. also let's so we don't get confused because we the click is a shaker let me turn the click off I'm clicking right here at the beginning so the where pro tools is a timeline uh, up here, let me move this out of the way. This is your timeline, and it's showing you from bar one to the end of the song. So, uh, Easy Drummer is a timeline inside of a timeline. It's like a dream inside of a dream, what, whatever the movie. Um, but basically, it's just it's following your timeline, and you create your own timeline inside of Easy Drummer. It'll make sense the more you use it, but I just dragged this shaker part to bar six, and now let's say at bar ten, we want a drum part to come in. So instead of percussion, I'm going to click right here on modern because, again, these, these will be the folders you will have as the basic version and the demo version. So I'm going to go to straight mid-tempo. I'm going to go to mid-tempo pop, and I'm going to go to verse, and I'm just going to listen to a couple of these. I'm just click these play buttons here.
I think just for now, I'm going to take that one. And again, so many times I'll just move forward quickly writing a song because I could spend hours going through these drum parts. I believe my philosophy, as I've said many times today, is to make quick decisions, put them in the song, let this finish the writing of the song, then go back and tweak the sounds and spend hours picking out drum parts. I find it's more inspirational to get a song uh, arrangement together. The parts may not be perfect, but then I have something to sing to or something to play my guitar to or something to play my piano to. Then I can go back and go, you know what? That wasn't the right drum part. I can always replace it. So these are not etched. Nothing is etched in stone. So now let's listen. I'm going to listen from bar nine. Okay, so let's say I don't like that crash when the drums come in. I double click on this. It opens up the edit play style window. And there you see the opening hit. There's a power button right there. I'm just going to turn it off. So now let's listen. Okay. And let's say we don't like the snare sound. Well, you don't do it here. This is the play style window. It says it right here. Play style. I'm going to close this. I want to change the drums. So I go to the drum tab. And this is where, you see this little arrow right here under each instrument has one. So this is where you can pick and choose a different sound. So I'm going to scroll down. You can click and listen. So I'm going to, you can change the pitch. So let's just say there's my snare sound. I love that. And then here's my kick. Okay, let's take that. Now let's listen. Okay, let's say I want the hi-hat to be a little louder. I'm going to double click on it to change the play style and then I'll go here to the power hand and I'll say, you know what, give that hi-hat a little more velocity. So now it's a little louder. And then you know what, there's a little too much kick going on. So you see where it says amount? I'm going to decrease the number of kicks. And I don't even really think about how many there is. I just turn the knobs and I listen. And remember that's the way it works. If you, when you turn the knob and it sounds like you like it to sound, then it's right. There is no wrong way or right way. It's however you like it. And that's the way it works. Okay. It's, it's sign of seems like we miss our shaker right there. Right? So what, how do I get that shaker in there? You see it at this top, right? I can just turn the power button on to the shaker. And now let's listen. And you'll notice it's not the same rhythm of the shaker. So I'm going to double click on the, sh the shaker right here. I'm going to say for a mount, it says right here, it's eighth and, but I want it to be the 16th thing that we chose, right? Cool. All right, so say we want to end the song. I think I also don't have enough bass here. I'm going to zoom in command bracket and I need, you can see here, I need one more bar of bass. I'm going to highlight in grid mode, duplicate. Good enough. All right. So I'm going to hold the option key and I'm going to choose small. So now we can see this whole song. I'm going to double click on my zoomer and there is my whole song right there from beginning to end. I know here if I go to my sub counter and I can highlight the song is at the end 34 seconds. So here we go is our whole song for the day.
masterpiece. It is a Grammy winning piece. But the point is, we're using just two plugins, Spectrosonics Omnisphere for four parts. We're using Easy Drummer for our drums. We've just barely scratched the surface on these plugins. But as you can see, you don't really have to know shit about sequencing and synth synthesizers. If you can click on presets and you've got a tempo and you can drag stuff around and, and click on different sounds, you can write awesome music. You do not have to be a rocket scientist to be able to work this stuff. That's the point. So I'm off to get out of my pajamas and off to see Game of Thrones. And um, I hope this was helpful.